What's up, friends? Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Have a great show lined up for you today. Want to touch base and kind of preview today's OTAs. Want to go over some news and notes that actually happened on Monday and want to discuss a couple questions that I've been asked a lot lately. So let's jump into all of it. Let's start with the news and notes. We found out on Monday that Alan Lazard finally signed his restricted free agent tender. That is officially a one-year $3.986 million deal, just a shade under $4 million. He will become an unrestricted free agent in this upcoming offseason after this year. Um, and then the question becomes, will he actually be at OTAs and practicing on Tuesday? So we will kind of keep an eye on that as well. But clearly, great to have Alan Lazard back in the fold. This was always set to be the you know final outcome of this. I don't think anyone was ever expecting a long holdout situation. I don't think anyone was ever really expecting that Green Bay was all of a sudden going to give him you know some sort of crazy long-term deal either. It just always felt like this was the logical conclusion. I think I think the only surprising aspect of this is the fact that he signed it now. And it's interesting, right? Because for me, and I sort of thought that him and his agent were at least sending a little bit of a message of saying like, hey, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to cause a fuss here, but we're not going to, you know, we're not just going to go easy either. Meaning like, hey, he's probably going to be your number one wide receiver. He's well outperformed his contract up until this point. We would like a long-term deal. Like we're not going to show up at mini camps without a deal. Like it felt like they were playing a little bit of hardball without playing hardball and they didn't have a ton of leverage. So as I mentioned, this is how it always seemed like it was going to end up. But it then seems sort of weird that they would just sort of acquiesce and just be like, all right, we'll sign it now and potentially be at OTAs. Like if you're going to do that, It just seems like, wouldn't you just show up the week before and practice with Aaron Rodgers and the rest of the team, especially if you have the aspirations of being the number one wide receiver? I want to be clear here. This is all much ado about nothing. It doesn't really matter. Alan Lazard is going to be a key member of this team. Him missing that mini camp and a couple OTA practices that were fairly nondescript is not going to alter this season one iota. It's not going to alter his trajectory as the receiver or potential number one wide receiver on this team. He is going to be Alan Lazard. He is going to have a huge opportunity to be the guy in Green Bay this year. And that all continues. And we'll see, once again, if he's actually at practice on Tuesday and starts that campaign, or if he takes off after this and just shows up next for training camp. So all things that will have to sort of remain to be seen. But as a Packer fan, nice to have this all in the rear view and not have to worry about, is there going to be some sort of issue here? Lazard signs his tender. He'll be a Green Bay Packer this upcoming year. Again, none of this is a surprise, uh, but still, again, nice to have it done in some capacity or the other. Now, the two questions, as I mentioned, that I've been getting a lot lately, and I'll start with the first one because there's an obvious transition here. Number one is, who is going to be Green Bay's number one wide receiver? And is that going to be Alan Lazard? And clearly, this is a very difficult question to answer because how I've defined it is this is going to be a weapons by committee approach. I think we're going to see a lot of dual running backs or at least both running backs getting a lot of playing time. AJ Dillon, Aaron Jones, they're going to be very involved, whether through the screen game, whether in the passing game, whether just handing the ball off, etc. Both of them clearly going to be very involved in the game plan. You're going to get Robert Tunyon back at some point. Tyler Davis probably holds his spot. Mercedes Lewis is going to get a lot of playing time. You know, Josiah DeGuara is going to be your primary H back. Lazard, Cobb, and Watkins, I think, are probably going to end up as your sort of sort of top three wide receivers that Rogers trusts and wants in a lot. I think Watson and Dobbs are both going to have potential roles. I think Amari Rogers might have a potential role. So long story short, this is going to be very much a receptions and, and weapons by committee approach. That said, we know how much Aaron Rodgers values trust and veterans and people doing the right things at the right time for the right reasons. And to me, there's two players that just stand out, and that's Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. He has a rapport with them already. He trusts both of them already. You know, it's not like they're going to have like all of a sudden this Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams-esque ESP, but I still think those two are going to be the guys that he trusts key third down situation, need a completion, will you know, pressure comes on and you need to throw up the ball. I think Alan Lazard might be that guy. So I will say that I think Alan Lazard ends up being the the pseudo number one guy. 
I'm not sure how much it ultimately matters. I think Randall Cobb is very much in that discussion, and he's been a guy that I, I think is a, a little bit, and Perry and I talked about this yesterday, right? So like he has been a little bit under the radar, and you go back to how he was playing prior to the injury, and he was playing really good football. And we talk about that connection with that Aaron Rodgers has, right? He's going to have it more with Randall Cobb than any other wide receiver. And we talk about Rodgers calling an audible or a check from years ago. Well, the guy that's going to know that best and is going to probably be most on the same page with Aaron Rodgers is Randall Cobb. So I tend to believe Cobb and, and Lazard are both in that conversation. I will lean Lazard, but I could go either way in that situation. Then the other question that I've been getting a lot of is, you know, and actually Zach Cruz uh, DM me yesterday and was like, gun to your head, who is going to be the Packers top five offensive linemen week one? Who's your five starters? And this is a v- impossible question because we just don't know the health of David Bakhtiari at this point. But I, I told him, you know, same thing, gun to my head. I'm going Bakhtiari at left tackle, John Runyon Jr. at left guard, Josh Myers at center. And then I went Royce Newman at right guard and then Yash Nijman at right tackle. So if, again, gun to my head today. That's what I'm choosing. That's the offensive line I'm going with. But just so many variables here, right? We don't know David Bakhtiari's injury status and if he's going to be ready to go week one. I think Runyon has got that left guard spot down. I think uh, Josh Myers has the center spot down. Then at right guard, you know, Royce Newman could be in play there. Jake Hansen could be in play. Wouldn't shock me if Sean Ryan gets in play. Right tackle all depends on if, you know, Yash has to play left tackle for, for Bakhtiari. And if not, then he could be in that conversation. Sean Ryan could be you know, who, you know, Cole Van Lannen could be even Royce Newman if Jake Hansen gets the right guard. So there's just a ton of variables. But if I had to say today, I'm going left tackle Bakhtiari, left guard Runyon, center Myers, right guard Newman, and then right tackle Yash Nijman. So those are the two questions I've been getting a lot of difficult answers. But if I had to choose today, those are the directions that I'm going in. The other piece of news from Monday is the Packers moved on from kicker Dominic Eberly. And this is not super surprising to me. Let's just face it. He was not very much competition for Mason Crosby up until this point. Um, in the last day of mini camps, he was woefully short on a 53-yard field goal. So that is not a great sign, especially when that practice was indoors, uh, no conditions or anything. And he was very, very short on a 53-yarder. Just didn't look like he was a ever a legitimate challenge to Mason Crosby. So in his stead, they claim a kicker from the Minnesota Vikings. That is Gabe Burkich. So B-U-R-K-I-T-C-H is the pronunciation. B-R-K-I-C is the spelling, uh, but they claim him off waivers from Minnesota. Again, Gabe Burkich, um, undrafted free agent rookie out of Oklahoma, was 20 out of 26 on field goals a season ago, 57 out of 58 on extra points, also hit on five field goals over 50 yards, had one of the best legs of any rookie kicker, if not the best leg of any rookie kicker in this past year's draft class. I love Luke Braun, who's the Locked On Packers, Viking, or Locked On Vikings, um, you know, um, host, if you will. I think he's that's still his primary job uh, covering the Vikings. But uh, he he messaged me back and said uh, he was really shaky in the spring program, but knowing the Vikings, he'll be a 15 year fixture for you. Uh, so that was a great comment from Luke Braun. But uh, wouldn't be the first time that the Packers uh, found a diamond in the rough from the Minnesota Vikings. That's happened on a few different occasions. Uh, but who knows, right? And I do think that Burkich could be definitely much more of a competition for Mason Crosby than, you know, Eberly was. I still don't think he's a legitimate threat. I would be shocked if Mason Crosby is not the kicker to start the season. I know Justice Mosqueda, uh, who I trust a ton when it comes to scouting almost anything, he had him as the second best rookie kicker in this year's draft and thinks he's a legitimate uh, competition for Crosby. We shall see. I tend to believe that Crosby's, Crosby's job is safe at this point. I do think, though, that Burkich could potentially be a practice squad option where they keep him on the practice squad the majority of the year. If all of a sudden Crosby struggles, maybe they go in that direction. Now, Burkich is going to have to earn that. Um, and then, of course, if you know Crosby retires after this season, then they could move in Burkich's direction. But Either way, I do believe they get an upgrade right now for their backup kicker. Everly was not ready to truly compete, and we'll see what Burkich has. So I think that was uh, the big takeaway from that 
transaction. I just think they upgraded their backup kicker and we'll see if he has the opportunity to compete with Crosby in any capacity. All right, that leaves me with what I will be watching at today's OTA practices. I will cover all of them. I will be at practice. So I will cover uh, as much of this as I can and any other key happenings in tomorrow's episode. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But here are the eight things that I'm going to be watching for at OTAs. Number one is Jordan Love. I would love just to see Love put a, I would love to see Love put together a really nice practice, just showing confidence, showing growth, footwork down, not aiming the ball down the field, just rip the ball. I just want to see him rip the ball. I don't really necessarily care. You know what? You throw a pick or whatever. That's okay. That's what practices are for. But I want to see him play with confidence, control of everything, and just rip the ball a little bit more. And, and he did that in the two-minute drill, and it looked it, with great results. So I'm hoping that he can build off of that last two-minute drill in minicamp where he led his team down the field to score a touchdown. It was probably, not probably, was his best moments of this offseason so far. I know it's still early. I know he can't glean a lot from OTAs and minicamps, but would love to see him have a big day at practice. I also want to try to keep a little bit closer of an eye on Cole Van Lannan. As I mentioned, I'm not a huge believer that he's actually in the starting offensive tackle conversation. I've been wrong before. I will be wrong again, and I hopefully am wrong this time, and hopefully he's really taken a jump and is ready to compete for that spot. I'm going to try to keep an extra eye on Cole Van Lannan. Still want to see more from these rookie wide receivers. I just think there's so much talent there and Green Bay needs playmakers, uh, guys who can get the ball in their hands and make plays. I'm going to be keeping an extra eye, eye still on Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Samori Toure. We could get our first look at Alan Lazard and Gabe Burkich. So we'll see what the, you know, A, the newest Packer and Gabe Burkich looks like. And then if we do, in fact, get our first glance at Alan Lazard, wide receiver one, potentially in Green Bay. Also want to see some more Kayshawn Nixon. He had a really nice mini camp and I want to see if, again, the old Mike McCarthyism, if he can stack success and put together more nice practices and really take hold of that number four corner spot, which I believe he's going to have, but another strong practice would be a great way to continue to wrap that up and uh, you know sort of wrap up OTA strong and get to training camp. Same thing with Sean Davis. He seems to have a really good hold on that number three safety spot right now. I want to see what he can do. I was watching some of his individual drills and he really looked explosive. So I want to see if he can take another step and maybe really lock down that number three safety spot. Also want to see if Devontae Wyatt continues to get some reps with the ones. And if so, what he can do with it. These are non-padded. So offensive line, defensive line, you can only get so much out of it, but still want to see what he does with those reps. And then lastly, you know, sort of a amalgamation of things here, but we saw Eric Stokes was not at the last mini camp practice. Do we see him at OTAs and is he practicing? Was there some sort of injury issue? Also, Juwan Winfrey seemingly dropped out of the last OTA practice or mini camp practice. Is he ready to go for OTAs? And is he present? Is he, you know, with the rehab group? Same thing with Mason Crosby. Does he continue with the rehab group? And then basically just, is there any other injury updates? What's the player attendance like? So going to be keeping an eye on all of those things to see what I can glean from this next OTA, the final OTA that will be open to the, the media, and then we will start getting ready for training camp. So that is going to do it for me today. I will be right back here tomorrow, breaking down whatever I can from Tuesday's OTA. But until next time, and as always, go Paco.